got another eBay steel in this big ugly box. From the title you might already be able to tell what it is. Though this is not even remotely adequate packaging for a CNC machine, I'm honestly not surprised because I paid approximately a fifth of what this is actually worth. To check on some parts, I performed a time-lapse teardown, a skill that took years to acquire. After detaching the Y sled, I could already feel a certain bumpiness in its movement. That's never a good sign. So I had to go further and check on the track rollers. Well, the weight of the Y sled is held by four track rollers and that seems reasonable enough. But if the package has been turned over during shipping, and I'm almost certain it has, then the weight of the entire bottom section would have been held by two eccentric track rollers. And since they are more bumpy than my 80 year old roller skater bearings, I'm almost certain that that is exactly what happened. At least there's no damage on the tracks. Thank God the company we have to deal with is offering free support in five languages and quick delivery of spare parts. Too bad though they didn't manage to answer two emails within six weeks. So I had to repair the track rollers on my own. At first I failed by using 1.5 mm ball bearings, which got me this loose fit. I'm gonna get those back out and try 1.58 mm ball bearings instead. That equals one sixteenth of an inch, I think. These have two rows of nine ball bearings each, so very nice parts, but difficult or even impossible to get. More on that topic in a second. Well, this time I tried the correct sixteenth inch roller bearings which fit very well, but sadly the other parts were damaged as well, so the ride was still very bumpy. The hunt for replacement parts was rather difficult, at least in Germany. And this set of two track rollers and four mounting posts cost me about 50 euros. And they don't even fit because the track rollers that were fitted originally were custom parts, so it seems. In the end, I decided to delay that problem by moving over some of the good track rollers from the Z-axis, which isn't loaded nearly as much as the Y-axis, so I think it should be fine to use the broken rollers there for the time being. The electronics box is a rather pleasant surprise for a change. It's fully self-contained, cleanly designed 
and it uses L6208 bipolar stepper driver ICs. The only thing that I don't like is this evil thing on the right. That's a microprocessor board to plug in over the empty section on the right. It probably has the step planner built in, like the Arduino Gribble project, if that's still a thing. And it probably uses a closed protocol to communicate with its proprietary PC software over RS-232. I could call on their support team. <coughs> By the way, this is their actual website, and what is this bullshit picture even supposed to mean? Anyway, let's have a look at the downloads section. Maybe we can find something for the profiler machine. Ah, well, thanks a lot. They tell you how to operate the DRM system in their software, in the download section. Oh well, I wouldn't have used that anyway. There's a much better solution out there, free, open source, and much better performance. And the step direction interface of these L6208 stepper drivers makes this an ideal candidate for a Linux CNC conversion. I just beep through the pins on this pin header, write them down, and make a quick adapter for a D sub 25. Literally all that takes are three pull-up resistors for the limit switches and it's ready to plug in. The Linux CNC configuration is even easier. Just enter what you've written down and the timings from the datasheet and you're done. One minor little detail to make me feel comfortable when I'm around this machine. And ready to produce chips. Although I already have one for that job. Maybe this one will get a laser.